How is it going, databases? No data here, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Roblox Murder Mystery 2. And today on Murder Mystery 2, we are going to make a video that I have not made in a very long time. Today, I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to get rich quickly in Murder Mystery 2. I did make a video similar to this years ago, but to be honest, it's really outdated and really not all that good at all. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys an updated 2022 guide on how to get rich in Murder Mystery 2. Honestly, I think one of my biggest issues with the game is how difficult it is to get started. But regardless, I'm going to try and give you guys some tips and tricks on how to get started, how to go from a small inventory to a big inventory, and how you can grow your inventory once you got a few godlies on your hands. So yeah, if you guys are excited for this episode of Murder Mystery 2, then be sure to drop a like on this video. It helps out a whole lot. And guys, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Murder Mystery 2 videos in the future. And also guys, don't forget to use star code PURPLE when buying Roblox and Roblox Premium because it really helps me out to continue making these videos. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I think the hardest part of Murder Mystery 2 is getting started. When you have like zero godlies, it's really, really hard to get your first one. Once you have a few godlies, you can do some trades to grow your inventory, but like when you have nothing, it is really difficult to get started. Obviously, you can can unbox a godly but it is incredibly low odds and if you're not spending money it's very unlikely that you're gonna unbox a godly it's not impossible but it's just really unlikely let's be honest here you're, you're probably not gonna get a godly that early on and there typically is a shop godly for you to buy if you want to do that but that does cost robux and i kind of want to stray from using robux in this guide however even though it's basically impossible to unbox a godly you are going to want to open a lot of boxes and i'll get into why in a little bit but obviously the main thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to grab a lot of coins all right that is something that you need to do you want to try and get a full bag every single game which obviously can be hard if there's a murderer going after you sometimes you'll get lucky and the murderer will be afk which is really nice but also keep in mind that when you become the murderer you can also go ahead and just grab some coins without having to worry about somebody killing you obviously when you're the murderer you're supposed to be killing people but you don't have to you can just walk around grab coins and then once you have a full bag you can start getting some kills so do you keep that in mind being the murderer is probably like the best time to grab some coins so obviously a good way to get some knives and guns is to get a lot of coins i mean that that's pretty obvious so i'm not really gonna get into that all that much i think that's pretty obvious to anyone who's played the game however the main reason you're gonna want these coins is because you're gonna want to open up a bunch of boxes now obviously when you open up some boxes you do have a chance of getting a godly I'm not really gonna sit here and say, oh, if you open enough boxes, you'll eventually get a godly. It takes so freaking long just to get one box for one chance to get a godly, and the chances are just so low. It is very unlikely for you to actually unbox a godly without Robux. So I'm just gonna say that right there. Obviously, you can get lucky, but in most cases, if you're just having a play session where you're grinding coins and, you know, not buying gems or anything, it's really really unlikely to get a godly however there is another reason that you want to open up these boxes and this is actually something that i tend to find that a lot of people forget about and it is really useful when it comes to getting your first few godlies and that is crafting guys crafting is really really important when you're first starting out in your inventory everybody always talks about unboxing a godly and getting super lucky but nobody ever talks about how you can basically take everything that you unbox and craft them away and eventually get some godlies out of them. So yeah, the concept of crafting is pretty simple. You can go ahead and open up a box and no matter what you get, you can go ahead and go into the crafting and salvage that weapon. And then once you salvage that weapon, you'll get some shards. And then with those shards, you can go ahead and craft up to a higher tier. And you can actually craft a godly seer by doing this. It takes 20 legendary shards shards to craft a seer and with each legendary you salvage you'll get two shards so all you have to do is salvage 10 legendaries and you can go ahead and get yourself a seer now obviously 10 legendaries is quite a bit it's only a five percent chance to get a legendary from the box you'll probably get a legendary eventually I mean, the chances aren't that low. You'll probably get a legendary eventually. And remember, guys, even small things like commons, you can go ahead and salvage them and craft them up into higher tiers. Every six commons, you can get an uncommon. And every six uncommons, you can get a rare. And every six rares, you can go ahead and get yourself a legendary. So if you just go ahead and open up a bunch of boxes, you can go ahead and work towards that seer. So is it going to take a while to get 10 legendaries? 
probably. But this is really your only guaranteed way to get a godly in Murder Mystery 2 without money. Like I said, that's kind of one of my biggest complaints with the game. It's just really difficult to get started because it's so difficult to unbox a godly. And obviously, you can buy a shop godly, but it costs Robux. Really, the crafting is your only surefire 100% way to get a godly with no money, even though it does take a while to do so. Now, the seer is also the worst godly in the game when it comes to value. Obviously, it's only worth one seer on the value list. So, seer is kind of just the baseline, but once you have quite a few of them, hopefully, you can get the ball rolling and start trading for some other godlies. Now, of course, once you get 10 seers, it is sort of possible to craft a colored seer. However, you would need another godly in order to craft a colored seer. And in most most instances it's not really worth salvaging an unboxable golly to craft the colored seer because colored seers really aren't all that valuable compared to unboxable godlies because most unboxable godlies are just worth more than the colored seers so yeah guys when you're getting started crafting is really important and it is something to keep in mind so because of that it's also really important to decide which boxes to actually open so another tip i'm going to give you guys is actually to avoid opening mystery box one and mystery box two now these are the the newer quote-unquote newer because you know they've been in the game for quite a while now and these basically came into the game when season one started and you're actually gonna want to avoid these boxes and the reason is anything you get from those boxes you actually cannot salvage if you go to the crafting station it actually tells you that season one crafting will be available later in the season. Meanwhile, most of us are still waiting for season two. But yeah, the point is you cannot craft away anything from the season one boxes. So if you open that box and you get something like a common, well, that common is basically completely useless because you can't even salvage it away to craft up higher to get a seer. If you do not get a godly from those mystery boxes, you're basically just screwed because again, everything else is really not all that useful. Not to mention the godlies in those boxes really aren't all that good. They're not all that valuable. They don't really have high demand compared to some of the other classic godlies. I feel like a lot of people open up mystery box two to try to get Lightbringer and Darkbringer and they're pretty cool godlies, but they really don't have that much demand. They don't really have much value to them. So when you open up mystery box two, you're basically trying to get a lackluster godly and you're getting knives that can't even be salvaged. You are going to want to focus on the classic boxes because with classic boxes, you can go ahead and salvage anything within that box. Now, the question is which of the classic boxes should you open? Because, you know, some godlies do have more demand than others. And even though, like I said, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to unbox a godly, you're still going to want to stick with the boxes that have the best godlies. Because then if you do get lucky and you do unbox a godly, then you're going to have one of the better gollies in the game and at the time of this recording the best unboxable golly that you can get is actually the luger and the luger is in gun box one so i'd say the best box you can possibly open is gun box one because if you get the luger that's a really valuable godly i'd say the second best box in the game is probably knife box five tides is doing really good right now in terms of demand so yeah i would go with gun box one and knife box five those are pretty good boxes boxes in terms of their golly demand. If you want to go for a different classic box to get a different golly, that's totally your decision. But again, you're going to want to avoid those season one mystery boxes because you cannot craft away anything you get in there. If you do open up the mystery boxes, I recommend that you trade away those items to try to get some classic items. Like let's say you open up mystery box two and you get a common. I would try and trade that common for a common that is in a classic box because that way you can at least salvage it. But you won't have to worry about that if you just avoid those boxes altogether. All right, guys. So moving on to my next tip, I believe that this is probably the most important tip when it comes to getting started. Because like I said, most of the time in Murder Mystery 2, there's really not much you can do when it comes to getting started besides getting some seers. But this next tip sort of gives you a 100% way to start off getting some really good godlies. And that is to 
grind during events. This is really important. About twice each year, you'll see some events in Murder Mystery 2. And what's great about these events is they actually give you a chance to grind for an ancient. So with enough grinding, you will have a 100% chance to get a really valuable ancient, actually. So when these events start, you're gonna wanna get to grinding immediately. The sooner, the better. Because you're really gonna wanna work towards getting some coins or candies to get that ancient. And when an event starts, you're gonna have multiple options. You're gonna have a battle pass. You're going to have a box. If it's the Christmas event, you might have access to the gifting center to get a godly there. Now, a lot of people, when events start, the first thing they do is they go straight to the box because, you know, the box is really cheap. Uh, you do have a chance of getting a godly but i actually recommend that when an event starts you want to go for the battle pass i think the battle pass is the most important part of the event because again once you get to the end of the battle pass you can go ahead and buy an ancient a really really valuable ancient if you take a look at the value list the stuff that you get from the battle passes actually end up being really valuable at least 100 seers in value it is going to take a lot of grinding i'm not gonna a lie it's like a really difficult battle pass but do keep in mind that events tend to last a really long time you're probably going to have around a month until the event ends so typically you have at least a month to grind a battle pass and again these battle passes are really the only chance for people who are just starting out to you know really put in some work and grind to actually get something good and not a seer again i feel like a lot of people just go straight to the box because with the box you technically do have have a chance of getting a godly a really valuable godly for a lot less coins than you would grinding a battle pass however there is the element of randomness and you can go the entire event without ever unboxing that godly and i just feel like you're kind of wasting your coins slash candies if you do something like that you're much better off with just going for the 100 chance of finishing that battle pass and getting an ancient and actually once you get your hands on that ancient it might actually be a good idea to just trade it away for some other godlies because typically the newer knives in murder mystery 2 are really valuable at first but then they end up going down uh but i'll get into trading in a little bit now if you have the christmas event you also have the gifting center where you can grind coins and then give presents to people to get a godly that is also a 100 chance of getting a godly if you have time after the battle pass you can grind for that gifting center godly however mathematically i do believe it costs a little bit more tokens to get that godly than it is to get the battle pass ancient so I still think you should go for the Battle Pass Ancient first. Not to mention the Battle Pass Ancient just typically has more demand and ends up being better. But the Gifting Center Godly is also a pretty good option if you're playing the Christmas event. The Halloween event typically doesn't have anything like that. So for Halloween events, you'll probably just have the Battle Pass. Again, it is a lot of grinding, but it's really your only chance to actually grind for an Ancient instead of having to get lucky or spend robux at the time of this recording there's actually a christmas event going on so hypothetically you can start grinding that battle pass but i'd imagine there's only a few days left so so if you didn't get started yet on this christmas event i doubt you'll have much time to finish the battle pass and get the swirly axe but there's always next year so once you finally got started and you have a handful of godlies then the hard part is over once you're sort of in that middle ground where you have a few godlies the next important thing to do is to trade once you have those godlies you'll probably have access to a handful of trades and when you're in that middle class trading is very important a good or bad trade can basically make or break your inventory so once you got started you know if you play your cards right and make some good trades you can quickly get rich from there so like i said earlier you know once you grind for that battle pass ancient it may be a good idea to trade it away depending on how quickly you got it because eventually once the hype dies for certain knives they may just go down in value so you might just be better off trading for some consistently good godlies and see where to go from there but yeah obviously trading is a really tricky part of murder mystery 2 you know values change constantly i can't say for certain the best way to make good trades because again things just constantly change 
so I can't tell you what's going to be a good trade in the next year or so. But there are some general trends. Event knives that are limited time or are currently unobtainable typically go up in value, and unboxable godlies typically stay the same or go down in value. Some unboxable godlies that have really good demand do go up. Shop godlies that you buy with Robux typically go down in value really quickly. Those end up being some of the worst godlies in the game. Typically, newer event godlies are going to be super hype and super high in demand at first and then they will eventually go down and of course chroma gollies are super 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 good when they're new but they end up going down eventually and not being all that great so yeah those are the general trends again things change constantly some knives go up some knives go down so you really have to make your best judgment when it comes to trading and of course guys do remember that there are also several value lists to help you you can go ahead and look at the value list and see how knives are currently doing and make your own decisions from there now right now there are two really big value lists that have pretty different opinions in some cases there's mm2values.com so there's the mm2 values value list and there's also the supreme value list now a lot of traders in the community just end up sticking with one value list they'll typically just pick their favorite value list and go from there so you can go ahead and pick which value list you want to follow as for me personally when i'm trading i like to use both value lists and sort of just go to a nice middle ground if a trade is a win on both value lists it's obviously a big win if it's a loss on both value lists it's definitely a big loss if it's a win on one value list and a loss on the other then you know i'll typically look at other things like demand and rarity and kind of just use my best judgment from there if that's a bit too complicated for you then that's fair enough just pick one value list and stick to it whether it's mm2 values or supreme that's kind of up to you but just remember that when you stick to one value list something's going to be a good or bad trade depending on who you ask i think both value lists have their own pros and cons however overall i think that both value lists will give you a pretty good idea on which knives are good and which knives are bad even if the value lists have different numbers and there are some big disagreements with certain gollies for the most part i think both value lists tend to agree with each other on you know which weapons are good and bad so really i don't think you're that far off with either value list and yeah from there once you start making some good trades you'll get a pretty good inventory and of course you can still craft some seers and during events you can still get those ancient knives and hopefully in a few months time you'll end up being pretty rich in the game now another big tip i have for you guys is do not get scammed i feel like that is really dangerous to sort of that middle class that don't have a lot of gollies and want to do some trades i tend to find that a lot of them finally get some gollies on their hands and then they just end up getting scammed and losing everything just remember guys there are a handful of scammers in the murder mystery 2 community that's gonna want to manipulate you and try and take your stuff things like cross trading you know trading between different games or doing a multi-trade you know trades that require more than four trading slots just try to avoid those types of trades altogether. obviously don't let people borrow your godlies that's pretty suspicious but if you guys want a full video on how to not get scammed in murder mystery 2 just let me know i'm totally down to make a guide like that but yeah guys that is going to be it for this video i hope you guys found this helpful when it comes to getting knives in murder mystery 2 but yeah guys that is going to be it for this video thank you guys so much for watching this episode of roblox murder mystery 2 don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all those other things that YouTube people do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay purple.